Hi there, and welcome to the Grief and Rebirth podcast. I'm your host, author and trauma survivor, Irene Weinberg, here to encourage you wherever you are in your healing journey. In each episode, I chat with incredible grief and trauma specialists, healers, mediums, and celebs, as well as remarkable people who have inspiring healing stories to share. If you're looking for a podcast that's both uplifting and inspiring, you've found it. Let us help you find your joy in life. Hi, everybody. I hope this finds each of you so very well. I'm speaking to you from my studio in West Orange, New Jersey, and I could not be more delighted to have the pleasure of interviewing two-time international best-selling author, speaker, spiritual thought leader, shaman, and certified soul nurturer, Alina Chapman, who has dedicated her life to helping others discover their true desires and create happy, fulfilling lives by helping them discover the true gifts of their soul. Through book writing, building a spiritual growth community on Facebook called Soul Manifesto, her company Chapman Life Institute, her shows on radio, podcasts, and YouTube, and through conducting online group and one-on-one coaching sessions, along with retreats, forums, and summits, Alina, who will be speaking to us today from Sale Creek, Tennessee, joyfully (laughs) works with clients around the world from a space of compassion, non-judgment, and love. She has been a guest on ABC, CBS, PBS, iHeartRadio, and Law of Attraction Radio, plus many conferences, interviews, and events. And her numerous articles have appeared A Natural Awakenings, Best Self of Hay House, Glow Magazine, and many others. As she helps them to understand why they are stuck, unhappy, and unfulfilled, Alina's clients begin to identify what they are really here to achieve in life. Her quest to help people heal, connect to their soul's purpose, and foster abundance is beautifully in sync with the Mission of Grief and Rebirth podcast, which is to educate, enlighten, and present healing choices to end suffering and transform lives. And I'd also like to add that I have had the honor of being interviewed by Alina on her Mystical Muse podcast. I'm looking forward to talking with Alina about being visited by an angel during her childhood, what it means to have good spiritual health, her holistic approach to healing, how our inner critic holds us down, what is a soul retrieval ceremony, and much more for what is surely going to be an incredibly enlightening and insights-filled interview with a truly remarkable woman. Hi, Alina. Truly from Hello. my heart, welcome. Oh, thank you so much. And thank you for having me here. I am so, I've been so excited about this. I mean, so, so much fun. You know, we got to, put, we, we got to really enjoy each other when, when I was on your podcast. And now oh, yeah. it's double the pleasure, double the fun. Here we go. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> so, yeah. right. Uh-huh. So, so let's get everybody to start to know you from the beginning. So I want okay. to ask you about what are these spiritual experiences you had as a child, including being visited by an angel? And what did that angel look like, Lena? And share how people tried to shut you down. Yes, it actually started. I was born strange and what people would call strange. And I just didn't. Um, I just knew. I knew from such a young age. And I don't know if it's because my mom left me alone so much. You know, she was in the house. But I was left to do whatever I was doing, you know. I don't know if it was that or I just knew. Like, I was not good at taking naps. Three years old. And I would look up at the sky and just talk to God. And I would talk to the willow tree and know it heard me. I was three. And I would put my little dolly cribby thing on its side and talk to everyone about the universe or what I talked about as God. Three years old. What wow. is that? It was like so you must have come weird. into this. Did you maybe came into this lifetime still with memories and still so that's, connected to the other I side? Think that's what it was. Yeah. And my mom was scared to death of that, you know. So that didn't start us off really well. <laughs> what am I giving birth to over here? <laughs> yeah, the thing. She's nuts. And then um, when I was seven, uh, we were Catholic. 
I was going to a Catholic school. We had moved to Vermont and I was, um, I wasn't getting along with the nuns. So I played hooky a lot. The nuns were just so harsh and they didn't get it either. Too. They didn't get me. So I played hooky a lot. And so I was at home playing hooky for the hundredth time. And I was sitting in my bed and this angel came to me and said, it's time for you to have your gift. I'm only seven. And I said, okay. <laughs> what did the angel look like? How did the angel appear to you? Or was it just uh, in your, did you just it see It didn't her? have big giant wings. It didn't have any of the stuff you see in the fairy tales. Okay. So, uh, but it was glowing. And it came in through, it really started kind of weird. I had three pictures on my wall of these ballerinas with big heads. You know how they used to draw yeah, those? Yeah, yeah. All right, I had three. And and at first, I'm sitting in my bed and their lips started to move. The ballerinas' I, lips started to move? I'm not wow. kidding. I know, all your listeners are going to think I'm totally nuts. No, and, in the, on this podcast, you're not nuts. So go oh, ahead. Good. <laughs> The lips started to move and I kept saying, what are you saying? I don't get it. What are you saying? I'm, I was never afraid. And then all of a sudden, this being of light and beauty, and I mean, wow. the love that emitted from it was so strong, just said to me, it is time for you to receive your gift. And I and it was like I just said, glowing oh. like in front of you, just like. Yeah, but it wasn't like a big glow. It wasn't like it was white. It was like a cloudy glow. Do you know what I mean? Just there. And then she said. You will receive soul, lost souls who need to go to the light and you will wow. open the light for them. Oh, Seven wow. years old. I said, okay, that's fine. I was just very accepting. It's like, I now know that that's what I even do on the other side. I'm the one that finds the lost souls and brings them into the light there. So maybe that's why it didn't scare me so. But needless to say, our house then became haunted all the time. My mother, who was scared to death. And when I went down to tell her that this was the case, I, yeah, she flipped. She flipped. And, and she just told me, you can't tell anybody this. Then she brought me to the priest. Oh, my gosh. The priest said, oh, that, ha that child has an active imagination and she's going into evil. You have to save her, which is such a crock. And I don't have anything against religion. I was in religion for a long time in my life with the music. I know that there's always love at the core, but the people involved close themselves off so much to the doctrines that that's what causes the problem. They miss the key components. My dad even did that. But anyway, so that's how I started. And really, my mom didn't know what to do with me. So I just learned to be very independent. And I just kind of made my own life. And I, I just went everywhere and I met lots of people. And I always, I was always very well liked. I was really loved, but I was um, never really in. Right. You know what but I mean? It also sounds like you were not, like, especially in your home, was it hard for you not to be fully accepted by your mom for who you were? It doesn't seem like it was really it affected hard? you that much. It didn't affect me until I was older. When I was younger, I just, I didn't want to be with her. Wow. I used to really admire her because she was very artistic and I loved when she was doing the art, but I was always in trouble. It wasn't even fun. You know, I have little glimpses of fun things that she did with us, but it was very few. Wow. wow. And I uh, see, I have more of my dad and, and, um, and, but he wasn't home a lot, you know, he was trying to make his way. And so, yeah, I just ended up going down with the neighbor kids who had like 11 kids. It was like a city in itself. I loved it. You know, I, I and we took the old dog to get his bone at the store and we just played a playground. And then I'd hear my bell and think, oh, God, I got to go home. And I'd run <laughs> home. At that time. You know, that's what that's what I did. You know, I was really on the street just doing and, and we lived in a nice place. It wasn't like I was uh, in Brooklyn or right. something, you know. But still, uh, and it didn't really affect me until later in high school, because part of being this spiritual being, and I never felt that there were limitations. And I didn't understand all these freaking rules everybody always wanted to make. That's why I didn't get along with nuns. Why are you making rules? You're not, we're not supposed to have all these rules. These why are, are you so darn controlling and rigid, right? And like, yeah, yeah. why yeah. are you so trying to control everything I do? Right, right. And it started happening. And my dad, who had always been the person who said, 
you can do anything. You just have to want it. And then you just go for it and believe it. That's all he told me. Your father he really me, resonated with you more. He did a lot. Like. He did. But then when I got to be in high school and I turned out to be a girl that was very attractive, supposedly to people, then all of a sudden he started to change and saying, no, you can't do that because you're a girl. And I oh. said, what does that matter? And it just, we got into World War III. That's where my rebellion wow. came out. Yeah. Yeah. That's what wow. happened. Wow. Okay. So so I, go ahead. Really, go ahead. I kept going. I was what I call an unconscious competent because I just believed. And it wasn't until I got married that that I saw how uh, how many people live. Because when I got married, there were just so many expectations and so many rules because of how I married and where I married. And really, I married into something that I didn't even understand. And the... Uh, it what was, was that something you married into? I was not really, I was there to make the my husband at that time legit because he was gay and I didn't know it. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. That's a wide awakening. That's right a thing. whole other interview. That's, that's a whole, a other, whole interview. other show. That's a whole <laughs> other show. <laughs> so, but but, okay, go ahead. I was put, a lot of restrictions were put on me. I And they also had a high place in society. I was not supposed to work. I wasn't supposed to do. Well, wow. I thrive in that world. And I was finding everything was being stripped from me. And I went kind of through an identity crisis. You know, all this, everything, it wasn't even put as a rule. It was more of this is what is expected of you which was something I had not heard. It threw me for a loop. And for a little while, I was I was pretty not happy. I did end up, you know, everything has a gift. I mean, everything has a gift. And even during that time, even though I, I got four gifts, I got three beautiful boys who are incredible men, young men now. God, thanks. Uh, yeah. That's so wonderful. Oh, it is. And then I learned, I learned what it's like to live in what I call, and I'm not trying to, I am not trying to put anyone down, but that mundane world. I know now, I understand how heavy every day is and how the head just doesn't stop buzzing with right. crap. And so, and you, so you help people to leave that mundane world. You help people to come more in touch with the, the reality yes. of their their existence, right? Of, of who they really are. And I really think spirit wanted me to see what it was like to do that so that I could help people out of it because then I had to find my way back. I say, I went back to my magic, you know? And I went, I went back into meditation and everything else. I tried all the new things, everybody. I never had to meditate before I was connected. All now right, I wow. have to start. I had to start all the stuff that everybody meditation. I laughed my first time. So, in that's, meditation. That, so that's how you had to learn because now you use it to teach other people, right? Exactly. exactly right. So this was your path, and which I talk about my early days too. I can see how they all led up to what I'm doing. So you have all these experiences and you, and now how did you build up to being interviewed alongside Elizabeth Gilbert? What happened to bring you there? <laughs> The, who is the yeah. author of Eat, the very famous Eat, Pray, Love. And how yeah. did that become a spiritual experience for you? Oh, that it was brought down your wall. So that's all connected. So you, you're married to this guy. It's not a good marriage. Were, we you, still mar were you still married <laughs> to him when you were in, no. that, that, when you met Elizabeth? No, no. Okay. So bring us up to there and tell us about your experience with Elizabeth. Okay. So here we are with Elizabeth. I, I, I was someone on my team knew her and said, you've got to meet her. And I said, oh my gosh, I love that movie. I have got to meet her because I watch that movie. I still watch that movie. I love that movie. Eat, pray, love, right? right. So anyway, she came and we- um, actually, Was it at a conference or a- Actually, she's part of my program on my website oh, called wow. um, Unabashedly Me. And it's, it's, it's a beautiful program. And she's interviewed along with others, but hers is the major big- it's it's pretty long but anyway we didn't hit it off like i wanted to tell you the honest truth i know do i dare say that i yes. don't know why we just didn't hit it off i i i liked her i really liked her but we started talking well she triggered me that's why she triggered me 
So we're sitting up there and we're both being interviewed by someone else at this point in the in the program. And I um, you know, she's very creative. And they were asking her, where do you get your creative spirit? And she starts talking about this little elf that comes in and tells her all the secrets. And if she doesn't, if she doesn't want to do that project right away, that little elf will leave. Well, that's a very common, very common kind of ideal of every artist in some form, okay? Hers is a little elf. So anyway, I started to say, oh, she just was glossing over all that and not talking about the spiritual side that brings the ideas, you know, that that is not part, it's your inner knowing that's coming into the world to show you, right? Well, anyway, I, I just got triggered by it. And afterwards, I went to lunch with my team and I said, how dare she not share all this stuff? And I got on my little trigger. And, I, and then they looked at me straight in the eye and they said, well, why do you know all this? Oh, yeah. opening the door, opening the oh door, opening God. the door. It was like, oh, no. And that was that was because of wine. I shouldn't have said all that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, but, but you know, but, in the spiritual world, we forgive, we accept ourselves and we forgive ourselves for. Oh, totally, totally. No but judgment. Anyway, I was, I was really, I, I said, because if I tell anybody, they'll tell me to shut up, right? They'll think I'm weird. I'll be really strange again. Like I always have been, right? I've been incognito. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me about but, your, tra so you had this big transformative journey. So all this uh, has happened, you have this awakening and now you've got your, you had some journey to reconnect with your soul, which now you teach other people, awaken your chakra system and forgive. And yeah. how did this ignite your calling as a soul healer? I mean, that was a pretty ballsy thing to do, Alina, yeah. to say, okay, I'm really gonna do this out of the box as an understatement thing to yeah. help people and put myself yeah. really out there. So tell us about this. We're journey. flying out of the box. Right? We're not just stepping, right? We're we're gone. No box. Right. Inside, right? right. Yeah. So um I really, really I just started asking questions. And that book, Hello Soul, that was when I was in the car and I said, you know what? Uh, you know, I, I've already connected with my guides and everything. I said, I, I want to I want to be able to say hello soul and have an answer. Oh, wow. How do I do that? How do I do that? And so I went, you know, that thing teachers will appear, right? So um, I, I met with a shaman friend in my area. He was a shaman. And I said, you know what? I know my guides there. I love my guide, Joan. I do everything with her. She, that, that woman has saved me so many times in the spiritual realm, even now when, when I'm helping light, souls to the light. She, Archangel Michael, if you don't believe in Archangel Michael, it doesn't matter. You know, it is another guy that's helping me. And, and I'm, but I, I, I want to know my soul. How do I do that? And he started to teach me. And this is, you want to hear something cool? He like taught me about the first chakra, who I am, what is my world and how do I see myself fitting into it? Oh, wow. And that's the first chakra. And so we were changing everything there. And then I'm going to Los Angeles. I meet a, a sage. What does he deal with? The second chakra. Oh, my uh, it's God. It's like the spirit was bringing people in to work on the chakras, clear things out as I was going up the chakras with different teachers and shamans. And usually they were a sage or a mystic or a... Um, or a shaman. And then I was called to be a shaman, said no the first time. Can you say no to the universe? We do it every day, folks. <laughs> but the universe has what it says you need to be, and you will become it because here I am a shaman. Here you are. But that's hard to believe, isn't it? But working up through these chakras, and people always say, you know, a lot, you'll see a lot of people say, oh, yeah, I'll attach you. You can get into your inner knowing, and you can be you can be totally connected and now you can be guided by your intuition. That's the big thing right now. And I'm here to tell you something. If you haven't gotten rid of the crap that keeps you from accepting what's really true, that's why you can listen to a thousand channelers. And if you really listen, you'll hear all their belief system blocking their channeling. You have to get rid of that crap if you really want a true connection where you can go into yourself and say, hello, soul, what? You know, how, uh, what can, what do you think about this decision I'm making today? 
and you hear with clear as a bell. And why am I here? And you hear it clear as a bell. But you've got or to get you rid of a lot of stuff. Them. you got to get rid of the stuff that you've been taught. That's all. And is it hard? Uh, not really. I you know, so Everybody says, what do they call it? The dark night of the soul going into, okay. Is it really, really fun? Not always. But you know what? It's not bad either. And I always tell everybody, what you're doing is you've got a closed bud of a flower. And all you're doing is you're just opening one petal at a time. And before you know it, you've got this beautiful, like Buddha said, a lotus flower, right? That's you. And you just got to get rid of the things that are holding the petals in place. Well, at some point in this interview, I want to talk to you about how we handle, because I know we have this in common and you had it with your mom, how we handle when we've come to this place and we're very spiritual oh, and the people around us think we're woo woo crazy and they're giving us a little flack for that and we're honoring yeah. our truth. So we'll talk yeah. about that. But tell us what it means to have good spiritual health because you talk about that and yes. how it positively impacts health outcomes and really important, create strong relationships and emotional yeah. well-being. Could you talk to yeah. us about that? Yes, Please. yes. We really do. We live from inner to outer if we don't understand that. And so when, and we also live as above, so below, you know? So what happens in this, you, what you live in the spiritual world, you have to bring down your values of that spiritual world. You bring it down into this life. In other words, you don't sit there all day judging. You don't sit there all day um, criticizing. You don't sit there all day allowing that toxicity to be with you. You either fix it or get rid of it. You have, And it's not brutal. You don't have to say, I'm getting rid of you. It's by who you are. It's you. It's not them. They're, they're responsible for their own thing. It's you. And those circumstances that come into your life, you know, you've got to take a look at it and say, okay, how do I want to handle this in a way that is in the best good so that the next time I never have this happen again? It's very simple. Say you get fired. You can go hog wild for weeks, being all upset, crying, or you can look at it and say, my gosh, that job wasn't meant for me. I was done with it. What am I meant to do now? Oh my gosh, is that a night changer or what? And all of a sudden you're bringing in you, your spirituality, it makes it better. You, you start living in a pathway where you understand that life is happening for you to learn lessons, not to you in attacks, right? Right. And that's what it's really about. But that really does go back to the first chakra. Who am I? What is my world and how do I see myself fitting into it? All right. So let me ask you then, someone comes to you and they want to say, all right, Alina, can you help me? Who am I? How do I discover the true gifts of my soul? And what is this all about? How do you help people discover this stuff yeah. about them? Yeah. I mean, I'm sure they have to remove blockages and do different things. What do, yeah. you, what do you do? Well, first of all, I never, ever, ever criticize them of course and then say oh you're doing it all wrong or anything like nonsense like that and i also don't say oh your guide so and so is is right here telling me you're just being awful i don't ever <laughs> do you get I, that do a guy do you get that i i do uh, do i get it do i do you get it? a message that's that oh, a yeah. guy to say yeah. to you oh yeah yeah my, yes, my, I hear all that. My soul yeah. over here is being not crazy, you know, inappropriate, whatever. I do. I do hear that. Yeah, I do hear that. And I'm very oral. I hear more than I see. I'm learning to see too, but I mostly hear. But yes, I don't do that with a person. I usually, most of everything, I'm glad you brought that up, I mean, everything I do with you is so, how do I want to say it? It's so applicable for just you most of the time. And, and the reason why is because I'm being told what you need. I that I live a life that I keep that open all the time, you know? And, and, and so when I'm talking to you, every exercise that I give you, anything that I give you for that week is totally from the light, from your guides. From so your that soul is saying, this is what my, my, my person needs for, right. for their growth. Exactly. You're, you're actually, soul. you're actually yeah. a bridge between a person's soul and uh, that yeah. person. 
I am their highest part of themselves. Yes. Wow. I am. That's so cool. Isn't that amazing? It's amazing. And that's why I get the fast results with people. And that's why people love me and stay, even though I tell them you really don't need me anymore. You know, that's the kind of thing. And, and I love doing it. I love doing what I do. And, but you know, you, like I said, I work to stay very open to, to that. I don't allow stuff to cloud my mind to alter that. Because if I do, it's not being of service to you. And also, it makes life a lot less fun for me. That's right. So you basically hear what you are what you need to do and the exercises you need to give people. Totally. Are there other modalities totally. that you also use when you're treating, when you're helping people? Um, yeah, more and more. I've, I've helped people. You know, we were going to talk about the soul retrieval, and I think we should. And we are. We're going to. That's on the list here coming up. Okay. Well, can I talk about it now? Sure, like, sure, sure, sure. Okay. Sure. <laughs> A lot of times people will come to me and, and we, gosh, we're such, we're strong. We're strong. Okay. And we go through a lot of crap in our lives, but we don't understand sometimes the way we're living, or if we do live through many traumatic experiences, say you were bullied in school, you find out you're bullied later. Oh my gosh, you go through a divorce that you're really bullied. All right. All of that adds up. And there are parts. I know this is going to, this is very shamanic guys. So some of you might say, Oh, come on, but it's really shamanic. Oh, come and on. This is why they're all listening to this podcast. Cause they want to learn all this new information. <laughs> okay. So go for it. Yeah. Alina. Parts of your soul will actually say, Hey, hon, you so are not paying attention to us and you really are not giving us a good environment to live in. And uh, we don't want it. And they'll go. They'll go to other realities, other other places and, and hide. And I found this out actually not, I learned later about this in the shamanic, but it was really a psychic I went to during my divorce. And I was down, I, was, I went back to Vermont by myself to try to reason things out so I could be better for my boys during this time. And I saw, oh, psychic readings. I thought, oh, I could use that right now. Right. So up I went upstairs and I sat down and this woman came into the room and looked at me and she goes, what in the name of heaven did you do? And I looked at her like, you have your little boy part of you so angry with you and you have the little girl part of you crying constantly. And there are parts of you missing. What are you doing? And I thought, I thought she was freaking nuts. But then when I met a shaman, he said, no, you have at least three parts of your soul that have left. Wow. I said, why? And he explained it to me. You, ha your soul doesn't have, parts of your soul don't have to stay with you. The, if you have to, haven't you ever met, be honest, haven't you met like somebody who's like, oh, I once met an assassin, not by Ooh. choice. Yeah, that was not by choice. I And I looked in his eyes because I can read people's souls. Um, and I looked in his eyes, Irene. There was nothing. There was no soul in there. None. Isn't that amazing? It's amazing. So I because want to can't that's amazing. deal with the life he's leading, right. living. So I so but, so I want to just ask you, well, Lena. So people have an oversoul, and a sliver of that oversoul is in them as uh, uh, as they live this human life. Exactly. So, so what part? So the in the oversoul and the, the sliver, of, which, what parts are leaving? Uh, the parts that are leaving are part of that sliver soul you know and we we are very big our soul you're right irene that that soul is part of the universe it always it'll be part of source or god and and remember meister eckhart in the 11th century said the soul can become god but god does not become the soul that i contemplated on that for two months i'm not kidding because that is such a cool concept i understand it your part of your soul that is here now is they say it's your ego. It's not. It's your soul. That's that is the things you laugh at, the things that in the private moments are you, your creativity, your desires, your your want to do something so special, the love you want to find. That is all your soul right here. It is here to celebrate. But there's a bigger part of you. There are parts of your soul in other realities. There are, and then there's, and it's all linked to the universe and God. It's, it's amazing. You don't understand how big you are. So when you're living in this part with this soul in your body, yeah, if you are 
ignoring it, not caring, and you're only dealing with your ego and your critical mind and what people expect of you. And you're living like your parents tell you to live or like you think society tells you to live. And you are not creating and experiencing and mostly creating, creating, creating relationships, creating desires, creating fun, starting to grow and go back home, you know, get yourself to grow. Which is grow. why you came here, which is to learn and grow. Exactly. And, to, and, and so that your soul can evolve to a higher and higher vibration, right? And then the whole universe does it, it goes higher. It is right. important that you right. evolve because you elevate everything. You, right? So when your parts of your soul leaves, uh, it hides. And I'll tell you, when wow. I had my shamanic, um, I had a shaman do the go the retrieval on me. And then I was so fascinated with it. I wanted to learn. But he uh, he found my soul. He said, my God, you are such a beautiful per soul in general. This one part of you is hiding under a seashell at the ocean. And he goes, I, and, and, I, and you have to work with him to bring that soul back in. And it's a changing of you because that soul does not have to come back. It doesn't have to, folks. You have to be able to honor it and, and make sure you're providing a life that is using your soul. You know, you can't go back and still go into the toxic relationships still be in the job you hate you have got to change but don't people have like an inner critic that keeps them stuck and unhappy and unfulfilled you know it is like, it's they're, only they're like so my soul is here but i'm so imperfect you know so how do you how oh, do you help you're people not, you're you're imperfect you're imperfect in the good way you're imperfect as far as oh sure you're gonna go for that desire and you're gonna make a mistake big deal that's what we're supposed, that's our imperfection. We're going to fall for that guy who was just everything and find out he's a total loss, right? Okay, <laughs> that is that is what we're supposed to do. That's where we learn. That is the cool stuff. But where we get lost is the inner critic. That's different. That's a whole different ballgame. That's not imperfection. That is conformity. And conformity is a box. It's a hard box. So the inner um, critic is you're criticizing yourself because you're not fitting into that box anymore. You're not fitting into the box of the friends, the parents, the expectations, the we're ha we're seeing that now. We're seeing it now. And as a person who can see over this and see the vibrations of the world, I see more and more people who are living in that box. I see people on all social media who are saying, oh my God, this is happening. This is happening. This is happening. And they're getting all worked up in their anxiety. And they're stuck in their head. Nothing is like it's supposed to be. Oh my God, what do I do, right? I can't just get an apartment and live and make a, a living like so easy. And they, they stick in the box, but they don't get out of the box. And how can you, they get out of the box? By doing their healing work? And they have to, first they have to recognize they're only looking in a box. That the illusion that they're living right now is, is in their head. And that's what I help them do. But I do it with with guidance so that half the time, to be honest, Irene, half the time they don't even understand they're leaving their box, you know? And then all of a sudden they look back and they say, oh my God, that's how I was. And and because it's a loving spirit, right? Right. And oh, it's not oh, going absolutely. to say, it's not going to treat you harshly. That's that's not the whole goal. It's it, That's not what it's about. And so really, I, I, yeah. So half the time, I had one who, a very successful woman who was so full of anger, really bad anger. And she was known for her blowing up. And she saw me, she goes, I got to study with you. And I said, okay. And she goes, I don't know what to do with this anger. Do you know she was over years and years and years of anger in two weeks? Wow. And wow. positively gone in a month. I took her in stages, right? The world could so use that because I, I, I yeah. that's the whole reason that you and I are doing this. So many people are so stuck in that anger or the anxiety anger or, the, or sadness oh or my depression. God. Oh my God. Anxiety. Yeah. And yeah. it that's, actually that's cripples them from being able to, um, no, feel full, fully enjoy or learn from, or, or, you know, or have this life. So, and I also want to ask you, but do you want to say something yeah. else? Cause I want to ask you about that no, story I, about your mom. An old story and I'm trying to remember it. And I remember hearing it. It's about the fly who's at the window. It's, it's just kill. It's going at that window and it's just hitting the window over right? and over and over. 
can't remember the name of the book. And the door is open right behind it, but it will never find it. That's the person who's stuck in the box. The door is right there, folks. They don't and, but even you know how to listen, listen or to look for the opening. No, and that's why we have to look. I went to the shamans, the sages, um, some people that I just adored. I, I'm the person, if you have something to teach me, I will travel to the freaking ends of the earth to find you because that's how important it is for me, right? And so I will, that's how much I want to learn. And now I, I say to people, you have to, you, you have to know that you have these teachers you can go to who can help you, help you to get out of that box because it's hard to, to change patterns that have been your whole freaking life. The mother who didn't treat you right, right? Or the father who beat you down all the time. That You've got to learn how to get past that. And, and not hold on to help. that. I liken it to that you're holding on to it and it's like a backpack that you're carrying all the it, time. It, and you can't be free to look so beyond it until you, until you heal and drop that backpack. I mean, I've lived that. That's, that's exactly. you know? It's heavy. It's heavy. It's really heavy. It's really heavy. And keeps it obscures you up at your night. View. Yep. Keeps you yeah. up at night. It's saying, hey, 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 did you know this too? You can't do that either. <laughs> <laughs> so I know you have a wonderful story about helping people when they've transitioned. And one oh. of them is your mom. I love oh. that story. Would you like to share you know, a couple of those that stories was with my us? First time I, you know, and my mom, you know, God, we, we had the most unique, and little, like, especially about your mom that we know that where she was at when you were growing fear, up, fear, all right? fear. and you actually helped her transition. So this is very oh my interesting. God, so hard. Um, and she was having, yeah, there's two, but when she was actually transitioning, my mom wanted to die. You know, she wanted How to. How old was she at that time, time, Melina? How old was she? 76. She was young. In my world, she was young. Well, in my world, she's young. I think 76 is young. I always did. But she um, she wanted to die. And then when it was coming, she went into her full-blown, horrid, horrid panic attacks. She was awful. And so she was on her, she was going. She It was time. And um, she also, I have to preface this. My mother would not accept what I did. Would not, okay? Forever. And so when she's laying there she actually called me to her and she said i'm really scared i said you don't have to be scared and i sat down with her and i held her hand i did this instinctively and you know i'm i'm used to this other side right but i've never done this and i held her hand and i closed my eyes and i said mom you're safe mom it's going to be fine and then i saw her soul start to leave her body and i said you your, the light is right there and the light is all love and all goodness and you will not be judged. And I said, and she would reach out her hand and then she'd go right back into her body. And I'd say, mom, I said, you have people waiting for you. And I guided her. I actually guided her into heaven or light, whatever oh, people want. On what the a station. beautiful thing. Same thing. And, but when she finally, I'm sitting there and I'm holding and I'm watching her and then her mom and dad came and they held out the hand to her and she finally took it and she started to walk and she started going to that light. I couldn't catch my breath. It's like my de- breath just disappeared. It was just the weirdest experience. And then I caught it, but I saw her go completely. Wow. And I also took my brother into heaven. I, you know, into his, I took him there. So because... your brother, your, you, you've lost, your, your brother has transitioned also. Oh God. Uh, four months later. Wow. I know. Isn't that something? Did they have some kind of a no, they or connection? No, they hated each other. No, wow. <laughs> I don't know what happened. And, um, but him, he was horrible because his death was kind of weird. He, he's younger than me. He wasn't supposed to die. And I remember I took a friend down to go get his stuff and because she liked my journeys. I brought my drum. Anyway, he was haunting me. He would not go to the light. He wanted me to avenge his death. He was oh my ex-cop. God. Was he? Was he murdered or something? It's not categorized like that, but it was very suspicious. And he was an ex-cop who wanted to get rich quick and got mixed up in the wrong crowd. Oh, that's okay. what. I, and when they found out who he was, I think they just kind of erased him. <laughs> well, that's what it was. Erased. His life wow. was erased. It's really weird. So anyway, we're coming back and we're staying in this hotel together and we shared a room and she's, you know, I, I sleep through everything, Irene. Okay. 
<laughs> if the house is on fire, well, good luck. Try to wake me. But <laughs> that's a blessing. The, that would be a blessing for a lot of people, Lena. <laughs> oh, I know. It's really nice. But but anyway, she when we woke up in the morning, she goes, Did you not hear it? I said, Hear what? She goes, your drum was playing all night long. Oh I said, goodness. oh, it's my brother. He's been haunting me. He just doesn't want to go to the light. So I I, um, I finally said, okay, we got to, Stephen, we got to take care of this. And so I started talking to him. And then I always call in Archangel Michael. I said, Archangel Michael, he's finally ready. Can you take him to the light? This is what I always do. I, I always want to pass the buck. <laughs> <laughs> so, can you? Can you, uh, you can take him to the light. I don't think anybody else is going to be able to get him there. And Archangel Michael goes, Elena, he only trusts you. You have to take him. And I, I said, but I might not come back. I know it because, you know, I, I'm happy to be there. You know, he goes, we'll, we'll, we'll tug. Joan will be with you. And so I walked the path. And what did that path look like? And forgive me, I've been calling you Elena, but it's Elena, right? Oh, that's okay. Yeah, Whatever. it's Elena. A-L-E-N-A, but that's yeah. fine. You're fine. So- and now, I want to preface this. What Again, it's what your mind will accept, right? It really does, is. Even after, even after you go, a ghost is a ghost. It's the same as Joe, the neighbor. Joe, when he passes, is not in that highest realm of his soul yet, right? That's mm -hmm. the light. And sometimes you get in caught because you can't accept the, what it is. Now, my mind is pretty darn open now. And whatever I receive, I accept. So... We're walking. I took his hand and we walked on this. It was the most beautiful path. I'd love to say it's gardens and everything. No, it was just incredible, just light. And everything was soft. That's how I felt. I felt the softness. And I just, and all this is, but the best part is when you get there. Okay. I don't, you guys don't have to believe me, but this is what it was. I'm there with my brother. And all of a sudden I saw this big, like kind of a white cloud, but not. Okay. And then all of a sudden that cloud broke into millions and millions of souls. That wow. was source. Source wow. broke apart into millions and millions of souls. And those souls. And that's what you call God, really. That's really that's more what you call source. That's why when we evolve, that whole universe evolves. Everything clicked in my mind right then. The Everything made sense. Everything made sense. And, but the love. Irene, the love, everything. And they were all, there was so much love and acceptance. It was, they were all around us and loving and bringing us into the fold. It was, oh my God, it was so beautiful. And then I felt the tug. <laughs> <laughs> and I I said, oh crap. I, and I just, I said, okay, okay. And I came back down to do more work here. Have yeah. you heard from your brother since that happened? Yes. Yes. Does he come yes. through and say, thanks, sis? He does. And he also tells me now that he's in his highest self, he's telling me that we have lived many lives together and we are linked. We are we are joined in many ways. So he learned so, a lot from this lifetime. And then, and, you know, and, and there are probably a lot of corrective things going on. He, oh, he my God. Quite he a life, so, life with you. <laughs> my whole family had so much freaking karma. It's amazing I got through. <laughs> <laughs> well, you came, you came. As a they light, you came to yeah. as a light. So yeah. I want to ask everybody, uh, tell everybody that you've got these amazing books. And one of them is called, You Can't Escape from a Prison If You Don't Know You're in One. That's and then a good you, book. That's a good one. And you recently yeah. wrote, Hello Soul, Everyday yes. Ways to Begin Awakening Your Spirituality and Live by Your Soul. It so, is. It's right? Like working through the chakras. I tell did everybody that about one. your books because they're well, going to want to get Hello them. Hello Soul Lena. is written a lot. Now, if you are like, you can't escape from a prison if you don't know you're in one. It's a great starter. It's a great starter to get down the tools you need to get out of your freaking head and that box and into a life that, wow, there's a life out there kind of thing, right? That is what that book is for. It's great for when you're getting out of a, a divorce or you are getting out of your toxic situation or you just want to know. How can I be happy? That's a great book. And then Hello Soul. Oh my God. Hello Soul is my journey. My journey. Little old Elena Chapman is hers. From seeing getting back. the angel in the beginning up until where you are now? No, it was when I was getting divorced and I understood illusion and I started okay. going to the shamans and the sages. Okay. Finding my way back. But it's when I wanted to say, it's when I started that journey of, I want to talk to my soul. How do I do that? So it starts there. But I always give 
Um, and so what you're going to get is you get a story like, oh, wow, well, David is a lot like me in some ways, which I am. Sorry, folks. I mean, really, I am. And they're going to also see, they'll laugh, they'll cry, but they'll also get at the end, I always give, you know, my way's one way, but here's some other ways. Here's some ex other exercises to help you get to where I'm trying to get. And That's so marvelous. you follow me along. I also have it on audiobook. And guess who's reading it? Oh, me. You. <laughs> <laughs> so that is that is very fun because you know, that was hard. Um, and and you'll hear me laugh in it and everything. So if you're one who likes to listen, you can get the. But Hello Soul is a really good book. I, I haven't me, met anyone who doesn't like when it. When you say Hello Soul to your soul. Does it do, do the answers come in, in um, clear audience or do when you, I first started, how do you how like if someone wants you to yeah. use a pendulum, how do you how no. do you access your soul? How do you get no, those? No. I love using those tools so much, but I don't. And I, I do, but I don't. I don't have to. Um, when I first started, it was just hearing. And and so I would talk to my soul and then I can hear. Now, when you say you hear, what does that mean, Elena? Because I do know a lot of people don't understand. It comes in in certain ways. Sometimes it sounds like a voice and sometimes it comes in as a thought that you know isn't yours. You just know it. And, and that's how I hear my soul. And how do I know it's my soul? Because it has a different, it's just, it's my soul. You, you can just tell. It's not like, uh, one of the archangels or one of the Indian guides or, or one of the guides from beyond, you know, that's come or your power animals or spirit animals. It's not, it is more personal and it's right there. And, and now, now when I meditate, I can see my soul wow, and she's so fabulous. wise. Oh yeah. You know, is she beautiful? She must be beautiful. Yes, she is. And does she, she appear is. to you? Does she appear to you? Um, as She's as, so, she seems so, she seems sometimes so serious and other times so fun. Isn't that interesting? Well, that's like you. I guess so. There you I go. guess so. Right. But I guess it is because I live by my soul now, you know? Right. I, right. I really have integrated the soul in. I won't. That's why I stay. That's why I won't allow things. You know, I'll watch what's going on in the world. And it doesn't even, it doesn't. It's I, not I penetrating. I you're, you're, well, I look over it. Well, you're seeing it more and what let's talk about that you're I, it sounds like you're seeing the world more as a witness where yes. you're not personally invested not in what anymore. you're seeing and i think that witness being can help in a lot of different situations in life with our oh, relationships really. also can you educate us about yes it, choosing to be more of a witness in our lives instead yes. of instead and, and of I investing always... in the dramas that are going on oh, all around no. us yeah, you can't do that. And and there's a I'll tell you why in the end, because it's very important. And everyone who says they're on a spiritual journey really needs to get to the point where they are a witness. I call it an observer. Same thing. It's the same thing. So the witness is a person who sees everything, but you're looking above the trees. You're looking at it. You're not you're not attaching all the drama to it. You are just it's like you're watching a Broadway play and you're just watching everything play out. But yours, what does that do for you? Okay. Number one, you start to see things that aren't being really readily available. You're seeing, say you're seeing two people. Maybe let's take the example you used earlier when we were talking. You go to a family function and you see this guy who everybody loves because they're a good joker or whatever in the family. It doesn't matter. But you are above and that person used to trigger you. You decide, I'm not going to get triggered. I'm just going to, I'm just going to, I'm going to just watch. I'm going to be the, 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 what did, what did you say? The witness. The, the observer, observer. And you call it the, yeah, the witness. the witness. And then, and then when you're sitting there, all of a sudden you start to see things. You see that that person's telling jokes, but really in the quiet moments, they're very sad. You start to see the other people laughing, but they're, they're uncomfortable or you see whatever it is you start to see the overlying the overlying story and like in the world now you start to see you okay you start to notice every three days there is a new exciting thing for us to get upset about <laughs> every three days it's like clockwork it's clock freaking work so you start to see that now i'm not going into conspiracy theory 
don't even go there. Don't even bother with that. That's another thing. So this one, you're just watching and you say, isn't that interesting? And isn't that interesting how that's playing out? And you start to see, you'll start to see how everything is not making sense. That's what you'll see. You'll see that there's so many dynamics that are not making sense, that we all want the same thing. And how we're going about it is what is causing all the problems. But we all want the same thing. And I'll tell you why the spiritual people who are on the spiritual journey, this is where we come into play because we are the people. I got this. I channeled this this morning that we are the people that are supposed to bridge this. That is our job. So we can't get caught up in one side or the other. We have to be the ones who see above that so that we can see the commonality and bring people together on the commonality. And bring light to the situation where everybody bring else is going into the light. darkness, right? And that is the light because you're bringing love in. You're bringing right. accept acceptance. You're bringing tolerance. All that disperses the chaos, the darkness, the hate, and the fear, right? That That's is all over doing. us. Every So now that everybody wants you to help them find their souls, <laughs> find everything that they can do to live this yeah. life better. And so yeah. with more quality, with more joy, tell oh, us how you integrate the wisdom of shamans, the sages of old. You have magical guided journeys. You have spiritual healing journeys. You have soul ascension oh workshops. Let it rip, Alina. Tell us. <laughs> Tell us all that you have offer because they we're going to provide links to everything for you. Well, so. well, if you go, I'll make it easy. Okay. Um, I have elenachapman.com is my website. And I'll tell you what you can do in so many things. Really. I have, I've made things affordable too. Okay. I'm not, if I wanted to be a millionaire, <laughs> I chose the wrong profession. But I have like, if you're just wanting to awaken, I have a course in that that helps you get rid of all that toxicity, okay? You want to say hello to your soul. You're at that point. Well, then you want to do the hello soul. Everything is priced by the month, guys. So don't worry. It's not like, if you want to, if you want to study with me privately, okay, then we're talking pricey. But if you want to be in a class, it's good. And then if you want to learn truly the magic of the true magic of of that spiritual world and bringing it and affecting this world in good ways of the light healing other people you know changing a bad situation into good true magic that you can do then you join me in the third class and then if you just want to be a member and you want to do things you want guided meditations um, you know, you want to be on for that guided meditation two times a month, or you want to be in that group that gets channeling and be able to ask questions. I have memberships on that. That's you know, we got a little active program going here. If you want a book, you can get a book. If you want crystals to just help you, I've got a little shop there, guys. You know, I've got a healing packet of crystals. Now, come on. This is pretty cool. It Tell comes in a that. It's a little pretty packet of, you know, but really I see all these people go in and say, oh, this is such a pretty crystal. I'm going to take it. Well, it's nothing. The, 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 the crystal calls to you. And if you need healing, there are specific crystals that are so strong in healing that I know. I thought, why not just put them together and why not put them, get them into a form? They're larger. They have, uh, they're in the rough form because that's the purest form. They haven't been tumbled and messed up, right? And they have been, um, they have a little, they have a little bit of me putting something over them. And they've also been cleansed by the moon. And so those go in and then you, I give you ways to meditate with them, how to carry them through you, in your day, how to use them in your day. I help you so that you can truly start to heal the chakras. You do heal the chakras. You put them on different parts of your chakra when you meditate. That's wonderful. So, you're taking away toxicity like crazy. So now that yeah. we, and I think that this whole interview. That's the job. Say that again. I said, that's the whole job. That's the whole job. That toxicity. So <laughs> someone's sitting here and saying, oh, all right. So I got a soul and I can find out all this stuff. In Elena fashion, why is it really important for people 
who are here with us to heal and discover the true gifts of their soul. Why God, is that's that that's so here. important? Hans, that's why you're here. We disguise it as creativity and experience, but it's really you healing. It's going through those karmas and changing past lives, whatever it is. But if you do it in a drudgery way or you you resist doing it or you keep falling into the same, excuse my language, damn hole, you are not learning. And I'll tell you, it is we are supposed to be finding our way home. If you're not doing that, you're wasting your life and you'll have to relive it. And that's karma, oh, right? Or that's like that the lesson's karma. not you learned. To, you see, that's yeah, you have to learn what you have to. You have to get over these things in order to evolve your soul and your soul has to evolve. So if you don't do it this life, you're going to be coming back down and doing it again and again and again. So let's get off our little butts and say, hey, I want to make this the last time I ever go through this and I want to be on to better things. Plus the bonus is you really do start living a life where you find happiness and joy, joy in every day. You don't need to be having someone give you the joy. You are the joy. It's coming from now, inside of you. It's coming from inside you. And it's because you've gotten rid of all the stuff in your subconscious mind that tells you you are someone else, right? Right. And you see, you see everything in so incredible joy. And there's yes. magic all around you. You start opening up to the magic. I mean, the true magic around you. The veil lifts. You, you, how can you not be joyful? Now, of course, you're going to have days where, you, yeah, that, that day was a big, a bit of a headache, but then you step back and, and we have emotions that we're supposed to have emotions here. The thing is you don't sit in it for a month, right? You like last yesterday, I had a day that was like, I wasn't thrilled with that day. <laughs> But at the end, I said, oh, okay, so why aren't I thrilled? Because it really did turn out okay. I said, because I didn't like the process. And and uh, because I, okay, I talk, I talk to spirit all the time, right? And I said, because I didn't like this process. And they said, well, next time change the process. I said, you're right. So let's just let this go. See, isn't that, isn't that a lot easier, folks, right. to do that than to, God, get all upset, go drinking, cry in your well anesthetize everything that's going on instead of learning how to process it differently and i think process. letting go is a huge part of learning uh, of, of healing and 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 getting in touch with your soul because so many of us and i've been one of them until i healed and let go hold on hold on you can't let go yeah. of your anger with that person you yeah. can't let go of that story yeah. and it's like that can be something that was, but it's not something that is. And you can yeah. let it go, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, Alina, with that, I want to ask you, because you say also that life is too short to do something that doesn't bring you joy. You want to talk yes. to us about that? Yeah. We're not here very long. We are not. And when we're not, and the the joy, the joy we find within ourselves, that's why I say it's so important to find this this, this joy and this happiness and, and this acceptance, that's really the acceptance of who you are, right? That's right. what brings it. And it's so important to have that in our lives because that's how we can navigate everything in this world. And we are the ones that bring it to other people that are in such dire need of it. We are then all of a sudden a light just by being that joy, just you just don't know. One time I got lost. I'm always getting lost. And I walked into <laughs> you, the you wrong... With all your abilities, you don't have a sense of direction? No, I think part of me likes getting lost. I really do. <laughs> I ended up in this, I was supposed to end up in this hotel and I ended up in this um, geriatric center, <laughs> a retirement home. How I mix those, don't even go there. But I walked inside and in about three minutes, I had them all laughing and feeling lighter. That is my joy. I didn't have to do anything special. I didn't try. I was just me. And I told them how I got lost. They thought that was hysterical. And before you know it, everybody was talking. The whole room changed. That's what your joy does. It's incredible. I used to have someone say, Elena, when you walk into the room, you change everything. That's joy. That's joy. I can so That's relate true. to that. That is so beautiful, Lena. Yeah. 
You know, in closing, I have to say, you're not just a healer. You are such an inspiring and knowledgeable soul nurturer, and you really guide people who are seeking transformation. It's such a beautiful thing. I personally want to thank you for helping people to heal, connect to their soul's purpose, and foster abundance. Hey, hey, abundance from a divine space of compassion, non-judgment, and love. And I want to thank you from my heart of hearts for this healing, really enlightening and divine interview on grief and rebirth <laughs> podcast <laughs> well thank you oh i mean you know i absolutely adore you and I, you. I think you are a shining light you have so much to give to people and i'm just so honored you wanted to have me on oh my really. god we have so much synergy between us you know yeah but we'll have fun. to get together other there'll be more to come for sure Oh, for sure. When I'm in for New sure. Jersey, we're having coffee. I, I'm I'm voting for a bottle of wine. Oh, I would love that. That's Over a great dinner. Are you kidding? Oh, I would love that. I would love that. Yeah. And so I am so appreciating you. And I want to tell everyone, this is just a loving, this is a loving reminder that you can see there are going to be wonderful show notes about this interview and all Grief and Rebirth podcast episodes on irewineberg.com. Make sure to follow us and you got to like us on social <laughs> at, at Irene S. Weinberg on Instagram, Facebook, and wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube. As I like to say, to be continued. Thank you so much, Elena. Many, many blessings. And it's bye for now. Bye. Bye, everyone. To be continued. <laughs> mm-hmm.